Hey there, welcome back for the next module. We're gonna talk about closing the deal with the seller, how to make a lease option deal work with the seller. So far, you've mass marketed, you've whittled down to the yeses and the maybes, you've had an initial fact-finding conversation with them to determine their motivation and to find out the particulars of the property and their situation, and now, it's time for you to close the deal with the seller. We're going to talk about that next. All right, closing the deal with the seller. Pretty simple to do when you have a motivated seller. If you do not have a motivated seller, it is not pretty simple to do um, every seller now that is not to say that that every seller is is not going to have questions and objections they are definitely going to have questions and what things they might say things that that you would perceive as a an objection we're going to talk about a lot of that here in this little uh, module but if, you, if you've already communicated with the seller or your virtual assistant has and you've gathered all the information that you need about the property and about their situation, then this step will be really easy for you. Obviously, if you haven't talked to the seller up till now and you know nothing about them or the deal, then that is something that you'll want to take care of first because you'll need to understand what you're doing. Okay, this is really as simple, folks, as saying, okay, look, this is how it works, Mr. Homeowner. We're going to agree on a purchase price, and we're going to agree on a lease, leasing terms. And we're going to enter into a lease option contract. I call it the lease option agreement memo, because I don't like the word contract. And I'm going to show you my lease agreement memo uh, here in just a few minutes. But then I'll say to the homeowner, look, I'll find you a lease option candidate from my list of tenant buyers, um, my advertising, my signs, my marketing business, and uh, you're going to have the ability to pre-approve these folks. So I'm going to send them to you. Um, once, they, once they've qualified through me and once they've looked at the house and they like it and they want to move forward, I'm going to let you make the final decision. Also, you need to know the tenant buyer is responsible for, number one, repairs, that's maintenance, okay? That's if the toilet breaks, all right? Something goes wrong that's small like that. They're, you know, you don't have to be a, a maintenance man anymore, Mr. Homeowner. And that's, that's good news, isn't it? Also, I tell them that I'm going to collect a fee from the buyer. So there are no commissions or fees from the seller, okay? That is important for you to go ahead and let them know right off the bat that you are not here to get their money and their house, okay? You're here to help them solve a problem. And if you have an attitude that's different than that, then they're going to pick up on that immediately. They're definitely going to say, hey, this guy seems like a shyster. <laughs> you don't want to be a shyster. Okay, so a few words about this, um, this conversation that you're going to have with the seller. The only way to do it is to pick up the phone and dial it. Okay? Talking to people is not... It's not hard. You do it all day, every day. All right. The only reason why this is intimidating is because you're you're feeling less confident in yourself because this is not hard. It's different for you. So you don't want to be afraid. Here's what I always tell myself: Look, they can't eat me. <laughs> you know, I, I can I can really uh, mess this conversation up, and they're not going to eat me. Okay. Matter of fact, I'm going to hang up the phone. I'm never going to hear from these people ever again so it's okay if I if I step out there and I mumble and bumble a little I'm working on something and I think you'll find a lot of times when you're just honest about it and genuine people buy into that people buy that you're gonna wanna ask the homeowner if the home is ready to live in uh, this is a this is an important question if the house is not ready to live in then this is kind of a moot point um, 
on the on the seller lead qualification form in the previous module there was a blank with a star by it that said uh, comparable sales that's going to come in handy here in a minute there was also a, a star that said uh, loan information that's going to come in handy there, there was a star that uh, said when, when 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 are you going to be ready to move when is this house going to be ready to be occupied by a tenant buyer okay do you see why this solution is good for these sellers that's that's the first thing probably you need to understand is it's good for them because they getting they're getting payment relief okay so they're gonna they're gonna have somebody come in and take over the payment and then they have a uh, an, an ability to buy this property and within two or three years you know it's not an it's not an immediate solution today like I'm not selling the property today but I'm definitely taking care of this payment today and then I, I'm I've got a great probability of it selling in the next two or three years that is a solution for a lot of people think about it now alright but the deal won't work if the house is not ready to live in another thing you're wanna gonna gonna discuss with the uh, seller uh, you're gonna wanna discuss with the seller is uh, the fact that you're not gonna start the link the the, uh, the payments until you find a buyer and I'm gonna show you when we go through the agreement exactly how it's worded and you'll understand how this works for you and the seller okay you're gonna to wanna to set a purchase price setting a purchase price with the seller should be pretty easy because you should have comparable sales that you found from you know Zillow and Trulia and other other online sources to determine the value of this home what is the fair market value? What would it sell for today? Okay, um, you want to be there or under. All right, As, under really would be even better. If it's way under, then you want to take a little bit different strategy and not wholesale the deal off to the buyer. You want to keep it and stay in the middle so you can win big on the back end. However, for wholesaling lease options, you can go as full as as high as full price, full market value. Okay, so setting the purchase price with the seller, you can go as high as what you think that house is worth today, but do not go beyond. Okay, and the reason why you're not going to go beyond is because you're going to mark this property up 10% when you sell it to your buyer here in a couple modules. You're gonna mark it up 10%, and then you're gonna collect some of that 10% as fee right now. Ah, uh, ah, uh, that's how it works. You're going to collect that fee right now, but you're going to create that fee on top of that purchase price. <coughs> Excuse me. That you negotiated with the homeowner. All right. When you're on the phone with a homeowner, they're going to ask you a few questions. Now, you're going to need to listen to this module a few times, and I'm trying to make it fast and like, boom, 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 you know, because I know you're going to have to repeat this. And every time you repeat it, you're going to pick up another gold nugget. And you're going to remember another way to get around an objection. Okay, but you're not probably going to catch all this in this one particular, you know, video listening session. So go back and watch this over and over. I have, and, and I will, when I, you know, what I have done with other videos. Not this one because I'm making it right now, obviously. But once this one's done, I'm probably going to watch it myself two or three times. Um, because it sharpens me, too. The... The objections that you're going to hear when you get on the phone, we just talked about the things you're going to want to talk about. You're going to want to talk about, let, let's review that. You're going to want to talk about how you're going to find a tenant buyer. Okay? You're going to want to talk about how your tenant buyer is going to be the one that pays you the fee and not the seller. Okay? You're going to want to talk about is the house in good shape. All right? You're going to want to talk about purchase price. All right? You're going to want to talk about what the uh, the lease amount is in the month all right now during that conversation he's gonna probably ask a number of different questions and we're going to go over some of those right now number one is what happens if I can't if you can't get a tenant buyer by the time that 30 days is up or or whatever by a certain date or certain time by my next payment usually is what they're thinking well, the answer to that is, is uh, you know, if that should happen, if that does end up happening, you will have to make a choice whether we continue looking or we dis, you know, disband the efforts and give up. 
All right. Um, basically, what are their options? I mean, it's not costing them anything either. All right. So, you know, not a big deal. Not a big objection. These are buying questions. Objections are always buying questions. That, that's what it is. So when somebody says no, don't take no for an answer. Okay, and I know that sounds cliched, and it is cliched, but here's what it means. When somebody says no, don't just take no for an answer. Ask them why they said no. When you ask, a, 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 if you're in this conversation with this seller and, and he says no, I'm not willing to do that, just say, why, why not? And then shut up so the guy can answer, right? Why not? And then let him tell you why, because now you have an opportunity to respond to the objection. Okay? <laughs> so that's why they say never take no for an answer, because if you take no for an answer, then he, he, you just let him shut you down. Right? So you don't want to do that. You want to stay in the saddle. You want to make sure you understand that he understands. All right? And if these folks are motivated, you're not going to have a difficult time, all right? If they're not motivated, then just get off the damn phone, all right? Because they're going to wear you out. They're going to make you crawl through glass and beg for, you know, hey, fooey on all that stuff. Forget that noise. They're going to ask you what happens if the tenant buyer stops paying his rent, okay? Here, here's what I always say. These folks are very heavily vested they're paying a fee to be a part of my program to have an opportunity to get into a house that they can rent until they can buy it they are not a normal tenant they are not a tenant that comes in and is expecting to be out within 12 months or less they want to act like this is their home they want to care for it like it's their home and they want to pay for it like it's their home. Okay. I give the same answer to the question, what if he tears up my house? Let me say it re again real fast. I'll give you the paraphrase version. Mr. Homeowner, these tenant buyers are heavily vested. They pay a fee to be in my program, and they don't want to be normal tenants. They're not looking at being in and out in 12 months. They want to live in an opportunity where they can own and they have paid a hefty price and they are serious about it as far as all indicators go however if they did ever stop making payments or if they ever did tear up your house what would you do that's what I asked them I asked them again I, I put it right back on them and then if they go, well, I don't know, that's what I'm asking you. Then I say, well, let me ask you this. If I weren't involved, and let's just say this was a tenant that you had found, and they tore up your house, or they stopped making payments, what would you do? Oh, well, I, I guess I'd evict him and have to go in there and fix the house. Yep, absolutely. And you know what, Mr. Homeowner? It's happened to everybody. Now, the likelihood of it happening with these quality of people, it's not very likely, sir. But if it ever did happen, then it just happens. I have not seen it happen, sir, with these quality of people. And then move on. Move on. Okay? He's asking you if your tenant buyers are the Christ children. Okay? If they're the Christ child, if they're holy and righteous and they always pay on time, and if they, uh, you know, never tear up anything and the carpet doesn't get dog pee on it and you know, the kid doesn't spill Kool-Aid on, on the rug or any of that. But let's just be real, okay? What would he do if you weren't involved and this was his tenant? Well, he'd do the same damn thing he's going to do if it happens with your tenant. The only difference is, and here's what I tag on to the end of that conversation whenever I can bring it to an end. The only difference here, sir, is that the quality of these tenants and the difference is that if it ever went bad, I'm here to come back on the scene and help you find another one to replace. Okay? And, uh, you know, that seems to work for me. All right. 
Are you going to eliminate 100% of the risk? No, you're not. Okay? They're going to take care of a lot of the maintenance, the tenant buyers. They're going to take care of the payments. They're going to take care of, of, of um, you know, not tearing up the place. The way I set up the agreement is usually the first $250 or $500 of, of any expense in a month is going to be the, the buyers. And the seller, if, if, if it's over $500 in any given month of repairs to the house, then, then they need to step in. So those are the answers to a few questions. I hope that helps. Now, let's take a real quick look at the agreement. The agreement is very simple and you know you may need to cater this for your area all right for your your jurisdiction and so on and so forth so the lease option agreement important disclaimer just what I said you know check it out where you're at you know make sure you're not doing anything criminal <laughs> um, lease option agreement memo you can see this is a one pager a little bit of the signatures flowed over onto the second page but it's a one pager this is between you and the property owner now this is in the full closing packet which you'll find over in a, a following module I think two modules over so this is also included in there and all of these agreements that I give you for examples are labeled with who needs to be involved in them so you can see at lease option agreement memo and then underneath that it says property owner and blank your company okay so you're gonna wanna edit this doc file and put your company name in there or your name whatever uh, seller that's the seller's name will allow the buyer that's you or your company name to lease option the property at and then here's the property address purchase price to be see this is why you need to have this ready to go when you're when you're talking with your seller because you're going to remember you're going to decide a purchase price based on your comparable sales based on your information based on what they think and what you can put together as long as it's not more than the actual what the house is worth as long as it's not more than that you're fine the term of the lease option to be this is how many months three years 36 months okay Monthly lease payment to be. What's that monthly lease payment going to be? See, these are the things that you're answering in this conversation with the seller. All right. Paid monthly in advance starting. Now, look what it says. Starting the day the tenant moves in. That means that you're not locked into anything until the day that your tenant buyer that you find pays you the fee and moves his butt into that house. Okay. Then this actually goes into effect. So you're not even, you're not putting yourself out there, all right? You're not putting yourself out there in any risky way here, really. You're just, you're saying, look, I'm going to I'm gonna lease option this property. Here's the details and the numbers. I mean, this is going to start the day that the tenant buyer moves in, okay? Well, if you don't find a tenant buyer, guess who ain't moving in? The term of the lease option to begin as soon as buyer acquires a lease option tenant for the property the day that tenant buyer moves in it says it again at least here in mind the term of the lease option to begin as soon as buyer acquires a lease option tenant for property you're telling them right there hey look I'm gonna find the right guy out of my program of good tenant buyers that are in my pro program to qualify for home ownership all right, the next line. This lease option agreement memo will be assigned by buyer to a new lease option tenant. Yeah, you're telling them again. Look, I'm not the guy. I'm going to sign it over to a guy. The next one, seller has the right to approve or reject the new lease option tenant. The seller may use the buyer's lease option agreement forms, or he may use a form that the seller chooses before the tenant buyer moves in. In other words, I'm not going to get stuck on the lease agreement. If you have a lease agreement you really, really need to, you know, have us use, then, you know, the lease agreement, that's fine. But we, we have to have a lease and we have to have an option. And I have to have my assignment agreement. Those are the, those are the important ones. And we're going to talk about that when we put it all together, closing with the buyer and seller. The seller may cancel this agreement memo at any time before the tenant buyer occupies the property. Folks, if the seller changes his mind, he's not going to let anybody move in anyway. 
Okay, so putting this in there does not change the integrity of the deal. It is just a fact. All right? They can cancel any time they want. All right? And they can say, nope, not, not moving in. Uh, nope, change my mind. Not going to be a landlord. Guess what? That's life. But letting the seller know makes them feel good. Buyer's intention is to find a lease option tenant and assign this lease option agreement memo to that lease option tenant for a fee. Now we're telling them the same thing again, except now we're telling them we're going to get paid. Lease option tenant will then pay seller the monthly lease amount until they exercise their option or until the end of the option term. In other words, they're going to rent this house for 36 months, they're going to buy it sometime in that 36 months, or, it, or time's going to run out. One of the two. Seller agrees to allow buyer, that's you, to put a sign in the yard to advertise the property for sale. If the buyer does not acquire a lease option tenant to assign this deal to within 90 days of acceptance of this lease option agreement memo, this memo becomes null and void. That means you got 90 days and their permission to advertise the heck out of this property deal looking for a tenant buyer. All right, now I always put this in here because I want everybody to know I'm not a realtor. Important disclosure buyer is the principal in this transaction, and I'm not a licensed real estate agent. I'm not a realtor. Buyer does not represent anyone in this transaction but themselves. All right, I'm going to sign it myself down here, buyer, and I'm going to upload it into dot loop. Or I'm going to upload it into Hello Sign or DocuSign, and I'm going to send it to my seller for his signature. Once he signs it, off to the races. You better get marketing on that property, and let's jump into the next module. But first, get him to sign this deal. Get him to sign this deal. All right. Call him up. Tell him that you. You know what you're going to do, what you need to do, find out what you need to find out. You know, get it all straight, get it all set. Say, Mr. Homeowner, it's a simple one page agreement memo. Eh, you don't even have to say, hey, let me send over the contract. Sounds like you're going to hit somebody, like, you know, like they might not wake up in the morning, you know. You don't want to talk to people like that, especially when they're in uncertain territory for themselves. You want to talk to them like, you know, I want to send you my lease option agreement memo. It sounds sounds so much sweeter. Okay, so anyway, that's, that wraps it up here for this module. Look forward to talking to you soon. Hearing about your great successes. Um, we're here for you. So, you know, if you run into some questions or problems or difficulties or you're on the, the phone with a seller and, and he's got something that's got you stumped, you know, what you want to do is you want to email me. All right. Email me because we got your back. All right. Appreciate you. Stay strong. You can do this. Let's get to the next module. Go get your lease agreement memo signed.